Well, if you're thinking about treating yourselves to a new game console, you might be pleased to hear that a new study has found a couple of games could have a positive influence on people's well-being. The Oxford University researchers tracked the amount of time survey respondents spent in-game and combined this data with a survey of players' mental well-being. Well, to help us understand a little bit more, I'm joined now by the study's lead, Professor Andy Shabilsky. Thank you very much for speaking to us. So you found a, a positive correlation between the time spent playing these particular games and well-being. Tell us more about the findings. Well, I mean, it was an interesting study, uh, if only because uh, we bothered to collect data on people's actual play. So we partnered up with Nintendo of America and Electronic Arts. And uh, we tried to build statistical models that link the kinds of things the players told us about their well-being uh, to the kinds of things that they were, were doing in-game. And, you know, from that, we did find a small positive correlation. Uh, and, and we're really keen to see if these kinds of things hold up over time. So uh, gaming often gets a really bad press. And to be really clear, can you tell us a bit about the games that you, you study? Because it was Animal Crossing. It wasn't like a shooting game that we might come to mind when we think of someone sort of spending hours playing a game. Yeah, so we had to focus on relatively modern, uh, internet-connected social games because those were really the ones that, the only ones we could get the data out of. Um, things might be different with kind of online role-playing games like World of Warcraft or shooting games like Call of Duty. Um, we really just don't know yet. So until gaming companies uh, really kind of forcefully share much more of their data with academics like me, um, we won't have questions about things like, uh, we won't have answers uh, to questions about really serious things like addiction or, or aggression. Yeah, why do you think you saw some positive uh, interaction there? And ultimately, you don't want to be maybe a parent at home now, have a child say, look, that's great, I can play my games console for hours and hours on an end now. There must be a point where you say, no, there is X amount of hours, which would be too many hours <laughs> spent gaming. Yeah, I mean, uh, please don't take this as a prescription from the University of Oxford uh, uh, to go out and buy a bunch of games. Um, I think they sell themselves quite well. Um, but no, I, I think it's really important for parents to be involved uh, in, in the games that, that their kids are playing. It's very important to know that, that you're playing a game because you feel like you want to uh, versus the, you feeling like you have to. And, and really making sure that the social connections that you have in play, because that's the, really their most important feature in 2020. Uh, making sure that, that you know who's on the other side uh, and you're happy with those relationships. Thank you very much for speaking to us. Uh, lead of that study, Professor Andy Shabilsky, really appreciate your time.